What is good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Real quick, this is a fly shirt, right? It's got some snakes on it. It looks pretty cool. I'm feeling myself right now. Anyways, today we are talking about this right here. This is Fuji Pro 160 NS. Real quick, does anybody know what the NS stands for? Because I've done a bunch of research and I can't find the answer. So if you know the answer, comment down below. But it looks like this film has gone through a couple different name iterations and now it's ending on NS. So what is this? This is obviously Fuji film and it's their pro stock similar to 400H. Um, this is just rated at 160 and this is the direct competitor to Portra 160. Um, use it the exact same way, you know, it's kind of the same exact pound for pound thing. This film apparently though is hard to find here um, in the UK and in the US and in other major markets across the world. Apparently this was typically only really limited to Asia, at least nowadays, it's been discontinued from anywhere else. And specifically in Japan, you can find this basically everywhere. This was sent to me by Chris from Zone Focus. Go check out his channel, link above right here. Um, but yeah, so I sourced this from him, but since then I've actually discovered, a couple people have mentioned to me on Instagram that you can actually get this in a couple specific places in the UK as well. So, you know, if you really want some of this, you can go on eBay, for example, and you can also go on a couple, you know, just do Google search and try to find it on some UK retailers. But is available although it's probably going to be priced you know, pretty strongly um, so that's the only downside but for me this actually was very affordable chris got this from his local retailer in japan for about 45 dollars per five pack and that's 45 dollars us of course that doesn't include shipping and potentially customs fees but you know you kind of work with the customs fees as you can by you know giving a little different value on that on that receipt but anyways you know this is really cool film and i was really excited to try this because as you know from a couple different videos for example this one right here I become a huge fan of Pro 400H. So when I saw that this was another option than kind of the Fuji Pro line, I figured I gotta try this out because maybe it's gonna be just as good, but at a slower speed. And slower speed can be very useful, especially if you wanna shoot wide open. You know, I got the Penta 67 with the 105 2.4. With Fuji Pro 400H, sometimes it's very hard to use that aperture unless I'm in a kind of darker room or something like that. So anyways, I gave this a shot and I'm pleasantly surprised by the results. Before we jump into my thoughts, I wanna actually show you some footage from the shoots that I did. Um, if you wanna skip all this footage, just go to this timestamp here, and that'll take you to the beginning of my thoughts and you know we can go from there. If you wanna stick around and see some of the footage, here we go. So I actually did two shoots recently with this film, and it was of two musicians. First up was a girl by the name of Zoe, and she's a guitarist. So we, you know, we kind of started and moved around and did a couple different things in the location we were in, which was a park, and I got some really cool photos you can check out here. So let's actually jump into the footage and you can kind of see me walk around and see my thought process as we go. Also, count how many times I say the word boom. Comment down below. I didn't know I did this and until I recorded myself doing a portrait shoot, I had no idea. So now I know that I say the word boom every time I take a shot and I'm gonna try to never do that again. Anyways, here we go. Okay, here we go. Hold that. All right, one, two, boom. So I basically just made my way around. I got up close. Then I focused on kind of the mid range, you know, chest up to the head, and then you back up to get this, the landscape. Some cool flowers here that are interesting and kind of my contrast against her dress, which is all black. So I'm just, you know, working around and sweating because that's what happens. I'm always sweating. <laughs> Hold on a second. Actually, no, I changed my mind. You can, uh, let's do it. You playing first, and I'll get low, and then we'll have you look up because the light's coming from up here. It just looks, it looks weird if you're looking down, it gets all dark and stuff. Let me back up a little bit. All right. One, two, boom. Okay, go ahead and look at me now. Can you hold uh, like towards the middle? I feel like it just looks a little bit better like that. Yeah. All right, eyes on me. All right, one, two, boom. All right. That's the bokeh shot right there. Shooting at F24. One. Hold on. All right, here we go. One, two, boom. Okay. Um, now you can start to like l gently play a little bit. And I'm gonna get kind of high here. Yeah, this is cool. 
All right, one, two, boom. All right, stay there. Here you're basically, it looks like you're in a giant field just surrounded by flowers. It looks really cool. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm just All right, here we go. One. Can you rest this, like kind of almost blocking one of your eyes? A little less aggressive, like kind of like half of the left eye. Okay. All right, hold that, perfect. All right, one, two. Can you close your eyes now? Um, and then this hand, mm -hmm. hold it up. Okay, hold that. One, two, boom. All right, that should be pretty cool. Okay. So as I mentioned, I actually did two shoots and the other one was with a violinist named Jay. And he's a really cool violinist. He kind of plays a lot of modern music in addition to classical music and can really kind of switch in and out. So we did something very simple um, for this particular use of the 160 uh, NS. We actually just went outside of the facility we were in and I posed him right in front of the street. And this was a good opportunity to just open up the lens and shoot you know, at 2.4 and see what the Pentax 67 could do with that 105 lens. And the results are amazing. I mean, it's exactly what you expect, you know, bokeh left and right. And then the NS has this beautiful pop of color. And I really love how his skin color looks on there as well. I really love how his images turned out. You know, the colors pop, you got bokeh left and right. It's basically why you buy the Pentastic 7 with the 105. Okay, so let's talk about the colors. I think the colors are the signature thing that makes this film stand out from the competitor Portra. Um, as you know from previous videos, like this one right here, I'm not the biggest fan of Portra 160. Um, especially when it comes to photographing people with darker skin. I just find that it kind of falls flat. That pastel thing kind of goes a little bit overboard, especially if you don't perfectly expose your images. Um, so with Fuji 160, I actually didn't really notice any issues from the colors. I really love how the colors turned out. There's kind of two layers to this. First and foremost, you have kind of the scenery. So for example, you've got trees and flowers and bricks and whatever. I find that a lot of those things really pull some good saturation. The NS really gives them a bit of life. Um, they don't kind of, there's again, no pastel thing going on here. It's kind of the opposite. You get some really, really strong saturation. I don't think it's anything overbearing or anything kind of insane. Um, not like slide film or anything like that, but it's really good for color negative. Um, so that's the scenery. I think the other thing to talk about is actually skin tones. And of course, you know, we always talk about skin tones. So, you know, Zoe, first off, she's white. So I photographed her with the 160. And I found that in my scans, particularly, there was always a magenta cast. And I don't really know, you know why that was. It is something that I scan myself, so potentially there's something I can change. But I just found that there was always magenta in the images and I always have to dial that back. You can see this example right here. This is kind of my base scan and then this is what I edited to. And I had to do this for a lot of different images. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but I'm curious if other people have had the same experience. Interestingly enough though, when I did my RA4 prints in the dark room, the magenta was just not an issue whatsoever. Obviously in the darkroom you kind of change your settings and then do your prints, but when I got to the print that I liked, which is the one you can see right here, um, there was no issue with magenta whatsoever. There's no kind of random creeping or anything like that. Um, that's what I love about printing. It really gives you this whole other view on the performance of a film. And it really shows you what a film is capable of and what it kind of renders like in a quote unquote realistic way. Because um, you know, as we know, scanning is not like the officially intended process for these films that are still being made. So that's on you know lighter skin. If you go to darker skin, Jay has darker skin. And I love that. Um, I actually feel that the magenta really just gives life to his skin. I don't find it to be an obvious issue like it was on some of the images with Zoe. And I think that's an interesting thing that I kind of noticed about the pro, the pro films from Fuji. Um, darker skin just picks up this life. And I think it might be because of that magenta. But either way, scans or prints, I love how the colors render on the darker skin. Actually, let's look at this print right here. This is a print of Jay. And in this print, you know, I just love the, the way the skin comes out. It actually, it, to me, it feels like what I remember his skin looking like in real life and what I remember from a lot of people that I know and family and friends that have darker skin. Um, and obviously it ranges. Some people have much darker skin, some people have less dark skin, but either way, I just find that the Fuji film does it so well. Um, so big ups to Fuji for that. Um, so yeah, you've got kind of those two layers when it comes to colors. You've got ambient colors, things that you see around you in nature and architecture and that kind of thing. And then you've got skin color. And I think the NS generally does pretty well. Although, like I said, for the lighter skin, you might have to edit your images a little bit to get it right where you want it to be. 
I actually use this as well when it comes to landscape photography. You know, we don't want to only talk about portraits here. So you saw it a couple videos ago, I actually went hiking. Uh, I went up to the Peak District, really nice weather, and just hiked a ton. And I brought a roll of this and I shot it on my Agfa Isolette. And I was extremely impressed at how the colors rendered and how the images came out. Um, and these images actually had a bit more of a mixed scenario when it comes to lighting. Some shots were kind of cloudy and, and a bit covered, and then the other ones were hard exposed light from the sun. And things look great. This right here is actually one of my favorite images. And I made a video about this, you can check it up here whether to edit or not to edit your images um, when it comes to film images. But this one right here, um, it just looks great. And I love how the, the green just pops. I think this film, this film really, really loves green, um, but it, it renders green in a, in a much more vibrant way as opposed to what I remember from using other film stocks. So if you're doing landscape photography, this could be a really good bet for you, especially if your landscape itself has a lot of color. If your landscape is a bit more rugged and less colorful, then maybe, you know, it's not worth using this. Maybe it was worth using something else. But I was very impressed by this, especially my old camera, which doesn't have like a coated lens or anything like that. Um, with my super old Agfa Isolet 3, I still managed to get really beautiful images. And I, I was using just my light meter to kind of get an incidence reading. So um, very, very interesting in, in how everything turned out here. So generally, would I recommend this film? I definitely would. Um, well, we don't, like I said before, we don't really have too many options when it comes to medium format in terms of color. Um, so you might as well try all of them and see what you like. But if you haven't shot this one before, you can get it at a reasonable price without too much of a hassle. Definitely give it a go. Um, Cause I really think it'll be a nice kind of change of pace from what you might have be used to when it comes to Portra. Um, especially when you, you know, expose different skin colors and also use different lighting scenarios. This film is very sharp and it's also got very, very low grain. And from what I was reading in the spec sheets, it's designed for portraits. So I think from a contrast perspective, especially kind of micro contrast, um, it's a bit more subdued and it's probably similar to portrait in that regard where it's designed in a way where you'll still get sharp results and they're going to be very clean, especially low grain if you use the 160 versions. But um, on top of that, you're not going to have, you know, it kind of cools down blemishes and it makes skin look a bit softer than it actually might be in real life. So, you know, I think if you're doing a lot of portraits, you have no reason why not to try this. All right, y'all, that's what I got for this video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and like the video. And of course, go ahead and subscribe. We're getting very, very close to 10K here. So tell all your friends, tell all your homies, share the video. Let's get me to 10K. All right, y'all, I'm out.